Greetings fellow Conquerors, this is Darkfire Slide, and welcome back to the Auto Vans Ottoman Vanilla campaign here in EU4, where we're playing without any DLC. Now, in the last episode, I've been watching the comments, and a lot of people are saying that I have a quite a bit of cynicism in my voice uh, about this. And you know what? That's okay. Because maybe I am a little cynical about this. Um, we retain our permanent claims on our uh, on the on the Balix and uh, we've managed to conquer Byzantium not that that was a particularly difficult thing to do but if you're playing uh, the Ottomans for the first time you should consider either doing that or taking over these uh, Ottoman Balix with uh, this mission let's see where was it it was uh, yeah expand the Ottomans I think it was expand the Ottomans no that wasn't it it was reform the Imperial Army that's what it was yeah you want to do that mission now, the nice thing is, and if you're playing as the Ottomans for the first time, you can go to this Decisions tab, and you don't even need to um, core Constantinople the same way you would core other provinces. You just, you know, go to this uh, decision, and you press this button, and it makes it your new capital. Uh, the culture and religion automatically change to yours, and you get a lot of development out of it. So, this, this grows by 11, so it becomes a 34 development province, which is just ridiculous. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and knock that out. Now, interestingly, if we wanted to be crazy, we could get aristocratic and uh, influence ideas and adopt an oligarchic administration and become a republic. <laughs> that's a thing we can, we can still do. So, that's a uh, just always something fun if you want to change up your run a little bit. Uh, if your country can do this, um, give, give it a shot. Republics are a lot of fun to play. Um, it can be interesting changing into one, um, especially because it really helps on later on. There are a lot of things that bad things that can happen as a result of um, not being a republic. But all that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and core all of the things. And then we're going to get rid of our fort here in um, Edirne because it's it's just overlapping I mean granted it is a nice thing to have uh, with this coastal fort but overall though I don't really see it having much purpose so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that because we can afford it and then uh, w one thing we're actually gonna do is we're gonna have let's see is there a good province for a fort around here I want to put it in this province but the problem with putting it in this province is that it's a grass it's, it's a farmland so be really easy to siege. That being said, you know, anyone that invades us from the north is going to have to stop here, and all these provinces will be safe from being besieged until that fort gets uh, cracked down. On the other hand, it is also a ducat a month that we have to pay, so it's also something to keep in mind. It may be more... well, we're about to expand in this direction, so building a fort down here probably wouldn't be that wise either. Uh, we're currently a little bit in the hole when it comes to manpower, but that's okay. We don't really need manpower that badly. But anyway, we've accomplished two of our missions. We've gotten the City of World's Desire, uh, which means that we gained three permanent claims on <laughs> on uh, provinces we already own. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But we get Dollars of the True Faith uh, plus one and Year of the Legitimacy plus one. So that's fun, I guess. And then... Uh, So by conquering Greece, we get the growth of the Ottoman navy for 15 years. We get a lot of we get a lot more permanent claims. Uh, we get permanent claims specifically on things that I believe that Venice owns. So we've got a Smederevo. That's not even is that a, is that a real word? No. <laughs> I don't even know where these provinces are. Oh nope, there's one. They're Serbian. They're Serbian provinces. Okay. On the Rasia or Rasia area, okay, and the Aegean Archipelago. So, before clicking button, these are our claims. After clicking button, okay. So that's that's sensible. We get a lot of free claims on stuff, and these are permanent claims, uh, from the looks of it. So, we will forever be able to attack these things. Now, this is really interesting. Because Venice is our longtime enemy here. He, he owns some provinces around us that are really inconvenient. 
uh, for him to be able to own. So we would love to take those from him in a war, and what's convenient is Genoa here is allied to him, and he also owns a province that we would really just love to be able to take. Um, and depending on how things went, we could even potentially take a province up here for free, and that would be stellar. Now I believe there, there were some things that happened prior to this patch where you know, you would you would kind of you would hug Crimea and they would like become your vassal. It, it was something along those lines. It basically allowed free expansion into this area after a certain amount of investment. Um, but I don't know if that's still here in, in the new version of the game. So we're kind of dealing with the changes that this has made, and, and I like these changes. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in here, a lot of stuff to conquer, a lot of fun stuff like that. Wow. So some of these missions, I wonder, it's like, okay, so you finally conquer Rhodes after getting through all this stuff, and what's your reward? Ship durability plus 5% for 20 years. Okay. I, I kind of miss the old missions that would give, like, stability and, you know, improve taxes and stuff. But whatever. We're going to go ahead and advance our technology uh, in military. Now, remember, this we are still playing, we are going to play this entire campaign in vanilla, meaning no DLC of any kind, not even any unit packs. What will we do without unit packs, guys? Our units aren't going to look good. I mean, look at that. They look like everyone else's troops, just with different colors. It's almost like this is Total War or something. Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Oh, we are, oh let's see. What, what mission can we accomplish? Oh, expand the Ottomans. Oh, we can make Constantinople even bigger. Well, let's do that. So now we need to conquer a total of five states. But we already have 11. <laughs> I don't understand the question. Alright, Venice is fabricating claims. That's adorable. Now our only ally currently is, is a horde. Let's see. Mazandarani. Mazandaran has possibly the most fun name out of anyone in this region. Kind of rolls off the tongue. Although I do like Mushasha, that's that's pretty fun. I, I like what they've done with this region. It's a lot more interesting than what it was before. Although, is Yemen a formable nation now? Because that would be... No, no, no. Yemen's just been... He's just been ruined by everyone else. Oh, that's... Poor Yemen. Medina is its own thing now. With Hijaz being, you know, significantly reduced in size. There's a desert in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Probably just to add some uh, terrain diversity to the area. But, uh... Enough admiring the new changes. Let's let's play here. So what's our what's our immediate plan? Uh, Tlemcen wants an alliance. Uh, no, sorry, Tlemcen. Uh, Morocco currently getting conquered by probably Portugal declared the war. Yeah, yeah, Portugal's just going for it. Funny story is, um, if you play as Morocco, the best possible start is if you manage to catch Portugal when Castile won't defend them. Um, because then Portugal just has a really bad time. <laughs> but yeah, we're currently waiting for our manpower to, to get better. Um, by coring Constantinople with the with the mission rather than uh, anything else, um, we've saved a lot of admin points. We can actually already get to tech 4. Um, just kind of consolidating this already really strong start. And we're going to go ahead and build some uh, some tax buildings in some places. When I say tax buildings, I mean churches, but what's the difference according to EU4? <laughs> Let's go and build four of these and try to find the province with the... You, you know what? There's a building macro over here that I could look at if I really, you know, cared. That's smart. Alright, our truce with Bosnia has ended. With Wallachia, with Hungary. Now... I'll be honest with you. I am worried about the Hungarian situation. They've got a really strong ally in Austria, who is presumably still the emperor. Yeah. Um, 
And together, they would probably have more troops than we currently have. Now, if we built up to our force limit, we would be a force to be reckoned with, to be sure. Uh, but for the time being, we are a little, a little vulnerable. Just a little bit. So we're going to hope that they get distracted and busy doing other things. But we'll see what happens. Um, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Sadly, the only other enemy that Hungary has is Venice, and that's probably ill-fated for the little Italian. And we gain some corruption. Now, corruption is something you still have to deal with if you have no DLC. Um, England has finished the War of the Roses. Uh, the Lancasters, the Lancastrians, the Red Rose has won. That's historical. That's what's supposed to happen. Alright. So we're getting close to finishing our, our manpower issues. We're probably going to try to build up to about, I don't know, seven or 8,000 before we declare this war. But, I mean, we're still coring provinces, so... It's going to take a while. Moldavia has been discovered fabricating claims. Well, that makes sense. Uh, Gazakumuk wants an alliance. That's going to be a no from me. Funny thing is, Venice would be a great friend if they didn't hate us. <laughs> and if we hadn't rivaled them and wanted to take their stuff in turn. Funny how that works sometimes. Uh, but as you can see, our, our income has gone from two... Uh, like 2.5 a month to like 7.2 per month. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we've got three boats. We might as well have them trade. I, I don't think it's going to really matter all that much. Now, <laughs> now this is great. So in case it's a, in any indication of how much a DLC actually does, when we go to select mission, the select mission button here, the only thing we can actually do with our ships is protect trade. Um, so we're going to have them do that. Apparently in the Ragusa node, we would get like 0.5 a month in profit. That's pretty good. Let's do that. But uh, yeah, it is a shame not being able to ask for things like war reparations. It's just such a nice like income over time kind of thing. But I digress. We're mostly just waiting for our manpower to go back up. And, and, and again, you know, this is something you can all do in vanilla without having, you know, any any problems whatsoever actually doing this. Alright, so it is harder to fabricate claims on some of these people. Uh, it looks like it's 25 to fabricate a claim now. It used to be uh, 20 base, I believe. So that must have been a change that they made in this uh, update. The uh, rule of the... Uh, I think it's rule Britannia is what it's called. Um, okay, so the Renaissance has happened, and this is one of the things I, I wanted to talk about. This is going to be a big deal it, it, because of the fact that we're playing a vanilla campaign. So, let's see, where did the Renaissance start? I believe it's economic. Yeah, technology. No, it's, it's institutions. I got the wrong thing. Here we go. So the Renaissance happened in Siena. Now, thankfully for us... We have met the criteria, and the Renaissance is going to start growing. And we can expect in about 20 years that um, our capital will have it. Now that's good. The problem is it's still not going to be like present in our entire country. So a big issue with uh, institutions is that one of the ways that you make them go up is you improve your provinces. Um, you spend the corresponding type of points, so admin for base tax. Um, Product, uh, you know, diplomatic points on production and military points on manpower, and every time you do that, you get a certain amount of progress. Usually, uh, any, anywhere from two to nine percent, depending on how high the development of the province already is, in order to actually get, you know, the institution to spawn in your country. And once it's spawned in one of your provinces, so basically you just form like a super city, and that's how your institution forms. Um, then you can, you know, have the institution spread throughout your country. You can get the technology that you need. Uh, you'll still be behind Europe if you're, say you're like playing in Africa and you do this. Um, you're playing as Kilwa, for example, and you just improve one of your coastal cities to the point where an institution spawns. Um, you'll still be behind like Europe, but you can at least try to catch up, um, which is nice. If you don't have 
and this this is all possible with the Common Sense DLC. I've heard rumors that uh, I think it's like Rights of Man, the Cossacks, or Mari Nostrum adds to this, but I can't confirm on any of those. Your best your best bet, in my opinion, is to get Common Sense, which is a great DLC anyway. I think it also adds in uh, some interesting stuff for a lot of nations. And and if you're the best thing you can do for yourself is to wait for a Steam sale and look up on the wiki what a DLC like actually does in its, f in its full feature list. I know what the major things that each DLC adds, um, kind of like the, the flag, like the flagship feature. So for common sense, for example, it's the ability to actually improve your provinces, um, which is important for institutions. Um, and then for art of war, it's being able to transfer provinces in war in wartime. So, you know, we talked about that in the last episode, how you can transfer provinces if you have the art of war DLC, but we don't we don't have that so that causes a lot of issues so if we call an ally into a war and they want to help us by sieging down a province we can't just let them do that and so in a way it actually makes the game um, more fair because a strategy you would do in the past especially as a you know or not in the past I should say but with the DLC is that if you're playing as a small nation you just have your a, a bigger neighbor um, like or sorry I'm losing my train of thought so you would just have a, a bigger neighbor siege down provinces and then they would transfer them to you because you have claims on them so you basically just get free provinces uh, if you manage to get a big enough ally so that's really easy uh, but now it, it, without that DLC you actually have to siege provinces down yourself so basically you just be banking on your um, ally bailing you out during your own siege uh, which can be pretty rough now thankfully for us Karaman has not gotten a single good ally <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll be taking a lot in this war when we start it which is nice which is good and we are still waiting for those uh, three provinces to core in Greece um, we can expect a rebellion to fire most likely but um, we get a an Islam event so we're gonna go ahead and keep moving towards legalism just because um, I want the tech cost having like 5% tech cost reduction is really nice. Um, I think it's going to go up now, though, because we moved further towards... Does it not go up incrementally? That's weird. That's really weird, if so. Y you would think it would be 7.5%, but it's not. I, I guess it's either... You know, it's more of like an all-or-nothing thing now, instead of like a gradual bonus. I, I, I think I like it more as a gradual bonus, if I'm being honest. But... That's okay. Oh, no, no, it changed. It's just on the month. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, 15% more taxes, and we're making a lot of money now. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pick up uh, Diplotech 4. I imagine that uh, Diplotech will be lagging behind pretty much the entire run. That's, that's my suspicion. Uh, now, one thing you could still do in vanilla is check the ledger. And one thing I'm actually very interested in knowing, um, just, just, as a, just to get a ballpark figure, is to look at everyone's navy. And really interested in seeing what Venice has. So Venice has 33 galleys, but the thing that's terrifying about Venice is that I believe they get a tradition. Um, no, they get an idea later on that improves their galley strength. But if we just build more galleys than Venice has, then we can basically just win the sea. So we're going to build more galleys. Um, I don't think we have... We have 12 transports. We're going to have 26 galleys fairly soon here. And uh, Venice only has 18. So that basically means that if we were to declare war on Venice after all these ships finish, um, we will win. Now, unfortunately, sailors are still something you have to deal with if you uh, are playing in vanilla. <laughs> and that sucks because sailors... I mean, <sighs> I understand why sailors are in the game. I don't like that they are in the game. I wish that... It was something else instead. Alright, so we've got two claims on uh, George's vassal. And, and vassals are a whole other thing we haven't even talked about. Um, and and we'll, worry, we'll worry about vassals as we get one. Okay, let's see. We can make the territory of Moria a, uh, a state here. Now, is that going to be worth it? There's, there's a decent chunk of development here. 
like 30. I think we go ahead and do it. Yeah, it, it's a profit in the long run. So, and, and as autonomy lowers in these provinces, we'll be getting more and more. Because the problem is, when you first conquer a province, you know, autonomy is pretty high. But over the course of the run, things will get better. I think I'm going to go ahead and build another uh, temple. Just keep our income growing, because we're, <laughs> we're making a lot of money. It's, it's nice being big at the start of the game. And uh, not even having to build up to our force limit and just having tons and tons of money. Alright, we have a royal marriage offer from Ak Koyunlu. Uh, I'm gonna have to decline on that one. We don't really... The, the, one of the nicest things about the Ottomans playing starting out is that they're a very self-sufficient nation. They don't really need to play the diplomacy game nearly as much as like any other any other nation. And uh, I was wrong about the fabricating claim cost. That's still the same. We just already had a claim on Trebizond and on uh, Imereti, so we didn't actually need them to begin with. Now, one thing we can definitely do now is hire some advisors. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, we could actually afford uh, multiple plus two advisors. I, I don't really want to just because I, I like having money, but having 10% more manpower would be very nice. Um, that, that, of course, is our cap, but it also improves the regener like the rate at which manpower comes back, um, just because the maximum is higher. Ugh, look at it, look, we basically have to get plus two advisors. Or, or the plus ones that we do have are not very... are not very good, so we could get the... We might as well get the, the spy construction network speed. Um, we can get a theologian, and theologians are great because they, you know, reduce your national unrest, and that's just awesome. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, I, I think a theologian. Now, now this is this is pretty funny. All of our advisors are Bulgarian and Orthodox, so you know something sketchy is going on in the court of the Ottomans. All the advisors are Bulgarian. Now that's all just random chance, but still, it's pretty funny. Let's see, is there anything we could do? We, we could be doing with our uh, diplomats, and the answer is absolutely yes. We're gonna look at fabricating on Wallachia. Now, are the knights protected by anyone? I forget this. Um, they're currently allied with Venice, so why not fabricate a claim on them? Let's just go ahead and do that. Look, they've got five thousand troops. And they're just standing there, minding their own business, having no idea what's gonna happen to them. Um, oh, Venice finally rivaled us. Well, thanks for making it official. Now, now, the funny thing about Venice is they actually have a lot of development for how um, geographically small they are. And... Alright, let's go ahead and find them in, in the uh, ledger here. Um, so they actually have a force limit of 24,000. You know, that's... <laughs> it's only... Uh, it's only seven less than what we like what we have currently in our army. Though we we could build ten thousand more troops in our army, uh, we're not going to yet because we just kind of want to make some money and uh, spend our money on some uh, advisors, which is quite nice. Remember, if you're ever having economic struggles, if you can get away with it, delete some troops. Um, it sucks that you lose the manpower, like it doesn't go back to the pool. But if you need money, that can be a way you can do that. Just go ahead and move all of the boats. I think we still got three more galleys on the way. Two more now. Uh, Granada wants an alliance. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Now, now, another thing that's nice about being big in this game, and one of the reasons that you should play as big nations if you're um, playing vanilla, is that everyone's friendly towards you. Everyone wants to be your friend uh, when you're a very big nation, um, just because you're scary. Uh, Karaman attacks Dolkadir in what could consider what could be considered to be one of the worst timings, uh, pretty much humanly possible. Reason being, let's see, does Dolkadir even have any allies? He's allied with uh, Samtski, who is this little nation over here. Um, I don't know if they can actually get through Akkoyunlu. I guess we'll find out. Not that it really matters, but. 
I, I think with 10,000 manpower, this should be a pretty safe war. Especially because we're getting back so much per month. So we are going to go ahead and just declare. And, and this is, you know, another thing that's great about the Ottomans. If you're for playing, if you're new, and if you've got the game in vanilla, is there's just so much to do. There's so much conquering you can do. Um, and you can just start out really, really strong with basically no problems. Um, no economic problems, nothing like that. Um, especially if you, you know, know how the game mechanics work. I've, I've been thinking of making a video uh, that I'm going to call the uh, the Beginner's Toolbox. Where I just kind of go through and say like, hey, here's how the UI works in this game. So that you know what you're actually looking at here. Alright, now, the funny thing is we're going to declare war on Karaman. But we're gonna we're gonna vassalize Jandar in the process. Actually, we could we could dra drag them in as a co uh, belligerent, and this is a great time to show off um, or, or explain how this uh, mechanic actually works. So we're ready. We're gonna declare war on uh, on Jandar here. Now we do have these rebels, as we can see, that are threatening to spawn in about six years or so. We're expecting this war to be done by then, uh, so that we can then go back and deal with the rebels that are about to spawn. If you're a small country these are actually threatening. As the Ottomans, I don't think that these rebels are going to give us much trouble at all. They're usually about 10,000 stacks if they're if it's just like a single province, which it looks like pretty much all of these are. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, declare war. And now, normally you don't want to click this button, because if you call someone in as a co-belligerent, it means they get to call in all their allies as well. Thankfully for us, Jan uh, Karaman's only ally is Jandar, and Jandar's only ally is Karaman. <laughs> so... This is really convenient for us because then the reason you do this is so that um, the allies that get called in, um, they don't their provinces are n the normal price instead of twice as expensive. Um, so if you're ever worried about answering a call to arms that you know is going to be a losing war, um, even in a separate piece, if you're just a regular ally in a war, you're not the main target. Your provinces are twice as expensive to. Um, to take so usually they'll just take money from you in that event which sucks but it's not the end of the world um, if you want to keep an alliance for example or you don't want to lose diplomatic reputation for whatever reason okay we're gonna go ahead and declare this war we're just gonna swoop in crush the army crush the navy there is no escape you will be auto vanned Cool. Well, that was easy. Good job, everybody. We lost like a hundred guys. We we lost more in this in this uh, disease outbreak than we did in uh, than we did in anything else. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, So, funny thing is, Karaman's actually losing his war. Which means is gonna start taking his stuff. <laughs> which is really rather comical. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna swoop in and start sieging some things down. Although, Dolkadir may be beating us to the punch on this one. And that's that's just fascinating, really. And we're going we're to kind of troll the AI on this a little bit. So by taking these provinces around it, the AI is not going to want to take, um, like, the rest of the land. Where is this army going? How far, how long is he going to retreat for? That's just, that's just silly. Who's Scoop? It's, uh, this province. This is actually a decent province, so we're just going to suppress the rebels, because the rebels, we're a big country, rebels aren't really a problem. <laughs> of the AI knows something's up, but we're going to catch them here and just probably stack wipe them, because Ottoman pips are just ridiculous. Yeah, about what I expected. 
And they're going to run into our cavalry that are waiting on the other side of the straight. Ooh, that's going to be... Yeah. And just automatic stack wipe. Their fleet comes out of the port. And their fleet is destroyed. Uh, we didn't capture any ships, unfortunately. But we'll go ahead and dock up and start repairing. All right, Genoa has fabricated a claim on us. This, th You know, this war turned out even better than we thought it was going to. And we can go ahead and pick up Military Tech 5 as well. Um... If we really wanted to, and this is something important that you can still do, even in a vanilla, is you can raise war taxes if you have 50 military points, and this will reduce, like, the cost of pretty much everything by 15%, and give you 5% more mercenaries. So, you know, like, one or two more mercenary stacks that you could possibly recruit. <laughs> now, one thing we, we don't have is absolutism. And we, ha we can't actually interact with this Age of Discovery because this was added in Mandate of Heaven, the Mandate of Heaven DLC. So th this is a whole mechanic that we can't even interact with, but th the AI might still be able to because there's a little bit of an inconsistency. Um, now this is funny. The Naxos has somehow caused 5,000 angry... What, what a... a Naxosian, okay. Na 5,000 angry Naxosian peasants. Lithuania is fabricating a claim. Well, that's not very nice. All right, we got some Morian separatists. Venice is fabricating claims. People, people seem to be under the impression that they can actually win a war against us, uh, which you know we find humorous. Let's see, if we can get a Zab infantry. Okay, no, this this is a pretty huge upgrade. So. The early military techs are actually really, really strong for a lot of reasons. Um, one of which being that you get huge upgrades like this. So, unit pips, basically how they work is that they increase... So, so offensive pips increase your effective roll for, like, your... For, like, in combat, so, like, your dice roll. Um, so, we, we effectively... And then defensive pips lower the enemies effectively by one. Um, on the actual dice roll. So this, basically what this does is we do one more die, like plus one to our die in terms of morale damage, and we take one less um, shock damage during the shock phase. So that's a pretty huge upgrade. Um, you know, and, and none of this is obvious. Like, if you didn't actually read into the game mechanics, you wouldn't know how this actually worked. But um, we're actually, unfortunately, running close to the time uh, so I need to go ahead and call this an episode, but thank you for joining me. In the next episode, we will conclude this definitely uh, close war with uh, Karaman and uh, his ally Jandar. And uh, we'll delve into some of the other mechanics that just aren't there if you're in vanilla. So I hope you've been enjoying watching so far. I'll see you on the next one. And if you want to support me, uh, in the description.